Hello, my name is Tim Harris again. I am here at the Center for Energy Education and so glad to be here. We talked, I've been talking about things in brief. The topics that I've been talking about are topics and things that we're going to be talking about in the OSHA outreach uh, awareness courses more in depth. But I want you to get a glimpse of the exciting things that we're going to be talking about because it's exciting to know, hey, when you first, when that light bulb comes on, hey, how do you feel when that light bulb comes on? You say, wow, I didn't see it that way. I hadn't been thinking of it like that. This is what we want you to do. Before you even step out there on a construction site, we want you to be aware. That's why we give you OSHA 10, so you can have some type of awareness what type of hazards that's going, you're going to be facing. We think about the PPE, the personal protective equipment that we wear. We think about that's being the first line of defense against those hazards that we, that we face. And I talked about those solar panels. When we pick up those solar panels on the construction site, hey, if you look at those panels, you can tell, hey, those panels got sharp edges. The corners are pretty sharp. They're metal. How am I going to protect myself against that hazard? I wear gloves. I wear protective gloves. This is one of the ways I protect myself against the hazards of the sharp edges on the panel. This is what hazard assessment is all about and job hazard assessment is all about. That JHA, we sign it every day on construction sites. We fill it out and sometimes it can become routine because it's something that we have to do and have to fill out. It, that JHA, this is the things that are listed on that JHA in brief. It's the steps to the job. It's the hazards associated with that job. And it's how you're going to protect yourself. And with a lot of things, and with that entails um, any permits that you're going to need. If you're going into confined space, a confined space permit is needed for some areas that you go into. If you're doing hard work, you need a hard work permit. If you're doing excavation with the dig, you need a uh, es you need an excavation uh, uh, form and fill that out. So the jobs, the hazards that associate with that job is on there, but how to protect, protect yourself against those hazards is just as important. You need to know it. You need to know to be aware of it. The PPE, we, like I said at first, is what we think as the first line of defense or how to control the hazards, but actually it's the very last line of defense in controlling a hazard that you face as a worker. The first, and we call this the hierarchy control, and there's other control me uh, methods and uh, procedures that you can implement and be very well much on the right, as long as the goal is to protect yourself against that hazards, those hazards. Um, the very first thing that you should do is first to try to eliminate that hazard. If there's a hazard exists and you see it, try to get rid of it. Is there, if, 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 if me lifting up a 1,000 pound um, box is, is going to uh, pose a hazard of me getting a back injury, then I don't need to lift that box. I need to get help from a mechanical means. I need to ask someone else to come along and help me. So eliminate the problem. Try to eliminate the hazard altogether. And if you can't eliminate the hazard because there are certain, certain jobs that the hazard is inherent and you can't eliminate it, then you need and you could substitute it for uh, a different way of doing things. A lot, of, a lot of times procedures and methods in the way we do a job um, poses and introduce hazards to us. You might need to think, is there another way that I can do this? And that's the problem with a lot of workers in a lot of areas, especially when you've been doing a job for a long time. Well, this is the way I've always done it. This has worked. But uh, a lot of times, hazards can be a hundred. You can do something hazardous a hundred times and nothing never happened. You can do the wrong thing for 300 times and nothing happened. But that 301 time, you get an injury. 
and the whole, now your whole life, especially if you lose a finger or if you lose your whole hand, now you can't work. Well, I did it the whole time like that. Never nothing happened, but now. But you, if you was aware, you could have known and have seen that the hazard could cause me a loss of finger, even a loss of hand. And so many times, that's not far-fetched. That is actually practical and it is real on the construction site. Dealing with guards, this is an example. Sometimes workers will take guards off of tools. They'll take the guards off of tools, you know why? Because sometimes it's easier without the guard to manipulate the tool and to go around objects. And they do it, uh, and a lot of people say, hey, man, I've been taking this guard off for a long time doing this job. I got to, I can't do it any other way. And then that hundred and one time when they took that guard off, the guard slipped and hit their finger or hit their knee. And now they have a big gash in their leg because they didn't have the guard on. Now this requires stitches and sometimes you know that that guard and depending on the type, the type of machine, the tool that's being used, that you can hit a main artery and bleed out. So never take guards off of tools that the manufacturer placed on the tool to protect you. You're exposing yourself. But that's an example of people who've been doing the job a long time. They say, hey, I got to take the guard off to do this particular uh, operation. No, you need to find another tool. You need to substitute or find a different way of doing it. That's what substitution is all about. And then sometimes you, you, you can't substitute it. Um, things, especially with ergonomic situations where you are lifting the same thing all day long on a, eight, on a time weighted average. Oh, you know, the time weighted average for workers is 40 hours a week, eight hours a day. That's average. That's the average work week. Let's hope there's a on no time weighted average. Sometimes things can become monotonous and laborious and you can become tired and fatigued, and you're, you know, that's a hazard within itself. There, how is the manager going to uh, keep that hazard and control that hazard? Hey, that time, that person needs, simple. That person needs to change, uh, sometimes need to go into a different area. Need to take him off of that particular job and put him on another tip of, uh, a job assignment until he rests a while from it. That's what heavy, heavy equipment operators as well. You can't expect to be alive and alert at 5 and 6 o'clock p.m. when you've been on the job since 7 a.m. in the morning. You can't expect to be as alert in the evening time than you was when you first started the job. So sometimes you have to implement administrative controls to control the hazards. You see where I'm going at? See where I'm coming with this? There's ways that you can control it. This is a part of the safety culture that a company has and we'll talk about. This is a part of a safety management system that we all should implement, but a lot of times we put safety on the background, y'all. We say, hey, the safety guy's coming. He's in the way. Hey, but I don't want to be the person in your way. I want to be the person that helps you go home. Um, and with all 10 and 10 and then go back to your family. This is what it's all about. So that last line of the fits that we talked about at the beginning, that PPE. I mentioned PPE in the beginning for a particular reason. I said PPE, which is an acronym for Personal Protective Equipment, because this is what we hear all the time. And we are treated haphazardly. Ha Oh, get your hard hat, put your hard hat on. Everybody on construction site is wearing a hard hat. Become a part of the construction uniform. That hard hat is not a part of your construction uniform. <laughs> the the, the high-vis vest is not a part of your construction uniform. It is a part of how you're controlling the hazards that you are exposed to. The hazards that I'm exposed to is the reason why I have the PPE, but that PPE is the last line of defense. It's not the first, and so often we grab the hard hat, and we pick up the vest, and we put on the gloves thinking, it's going to protect me. No, you need some more things in place first 
before you put on the hard hat, the vest, and the gloves, and the steel toe boots. Right? Let's face it, that's the truth. And that's the truth in any construction site. That PPE is the very last, and it will not do the job of protecting you fully. Because you're still exposed to the hazard, you still assume, assume a lot of risk when you take on the job on a construction site. And so being aware of the hazards, as you notice, with the Fatal Four, with the movement of the heavy equipment, with the material handling, with the excavation, with the electrical work that's going on, all of them, is a, all of them comes with an inherent risk. You, you assume the risk when you work with it but they also have hazards that can be created. You, the person, most likely as the working, worker, that's creating the hazard. And with that being said, it's been good talking to you, and I hope to see you inside my classroom. I'm excited about safety. I'm excited about the information that I have to give to you, and here in the center, we're going to, do our best to make you prepared, fully aware, and ready to face the world, the regular work day on a construction site. Can't wait to see you. Thank you.